Fredericks. I was going to say Christopher because Christopher's on this line, but Christopher wasn't convicted. He had already been sentenced, the ultimate death sentence, obviously. Mm -hmm. Uh, But Fredericks was convicted of the first degree murder of young Christopher in 1989. So again, quite expedited by the fact that he confessed to police of the murder. Um, And he was sent to our residential home of scumbags (laughs) in 1992 but unlike some others that we've covered so far he didn't have long to stay there because apparently the other inmates thought he was a bit of a scumbag too and one of them murdered him by stabbing him with a pair of shears in the prison so he actually died a year later in um or two years later i guess two and a half years later in 1992 so he didn't have long for kingston pen Let's say that, which yeah. is probably a good thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I was going to say, there's no, I don't, I don't think there's really any loss there. No. It's a little harsh, but there's no loss there. No. Well, the yeah. Is, what happened to the prisoner that stabbed him? See if he's still there. Oh, yeah. Well, he's not still there. Well, he won't be, close. yeah, in Kingston, but, but yeah, if he's still around, but. I I'm mean, not sure. We'll yeah. find out, and we'll provide an update in a later episode. Good idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, after this, you know, awful murder, uh, Christopher's parents actually turned their efforts towards advocacy and really sort of threw their hearts and souls into making sure that this didn't happen to other children, uh, which is pretty admirable. I mean... Uh, it could not have been easy to sort of keep this oh, in gosh, the forefront no, of your mind and and work. You, you can't stop being reminded of it, I guess. Although, I mean, your kid died, and I guess you're not going to... It's not going to go into the background yeah. anyways. Yeah. yeah. So uh, they pushed very hard for an inquest into the case. Uh, so basically to have the justice system look into this and see what could be done differently, what could be done better. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, it was only done after Fredericks had died. uh, And he had actually, before his death, submitted an appeal to the court, uh, which obviously was abandoned. no sense. (laughs) Because your your history of douchebaggery suggests that you should be let out on an appeal. Right? (laughs) Yeah. And you've, you've, you've admitted to it you pled guilty yes this is where this is this is what i did and this is this where i put his body like oh no no that was all fake like you can't appeal that no but you can appeal on a technicality right like i personally couldn't find a whole lot of hard details on the trial itself or uh details on like what evidence was found and that sort of thing right like yeah he's guilty but he wouldn't be the first person to you know, get a lawyer to appeal and overturn well, no, a conviction true. on a technicality. I mean, but. we've read about killers that have tried to do a crowdfunding for their p- appeal. Yeah. So. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. Yes, I know it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, but, I mean, thankfully, so it took a while, but they did uh, do an inquest uh, for this particular case uh, in 1993. Uh, and it actually resulted in 71 recommendations uh, from the court, uh, which is quite a few. So there was that was quite, it was quite a lot. Yeah, uh, it's a long read. You can find it on the internet. We'll post a mm-hmm. link to the inquest in the show notes. Um, but just take our word for it; it's a long read. It's, it is a it's long, a long... It's 136 pages long <laughs> of legal it was jargon. Very overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Lots of legal jargon. Uh, but sort of the There's one. A lot of Google. Google provided a lot of help with a lot of words. <laughs> uh, but uh, of the 71 recommendations, so there were um, a lot that were sort of minor and pushed through uh, within a year. I think about half of them been pushed through um the one that's sort of the main focus of this case uh is was recommendation number 44 which actually urged the canadian federal government to create a digital registry with offenders names telephone numbers addresses and descriptive details so a sex offender registry um 
similar to what the states already had. Uh, you know, everyone sort of thought if a registry like this had existed, then maybe they would have been able to get to Frederick's in time, you know, while Christopher was still alive. If they knew exactly where Frederick's was, they knew his history and, you know, just could have gotten to him faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, there's, there were a couple of sort of key steps along the way. So that recommendation was made, but it took a while before that actually sort of came to fruition. Um, in the meantime, 1997, um, there was a long-term offender designation created. So we talked a couple times about the dangerous offender designation, which, like as Kendra mentioned, is very specific. It's tricky to get. You have to meet certain specifications. And if you don't fall in those, then you can't be labeled as a dangerous offender. So this um, long-term offender was aimed mainly at sexual offenders who could not meet the dangerous offender category. So, or, so to sort of cover some of that gray area that the dangerous offender uh, designation couldn't, couldn't do. Um, so 1999, the federal government still hadn't really done anything about the sex offender registry. Uh, and in the meantime, you know, Jim and Anna, Christopher's parents had, you know, continued to advocate and push the government and keep the story, you know, in the news and in the media trying to make this happen. But the Ontario government at the time under Mike Harris, um, they were listening to Christopher's parents. So both of them uh, sort of sat down together and began the process of legalizing a provincial registry instead of a federal one. Sort of like, well, if the federal government won't, at least we will. So April 23rd, 2001, uh, something called Christopher's Law was enacted in Ontario. So they named it after Christopher Stevenson, and that was the first provincial sex offender registry in Canada. Which I just realized that this has nothing to do why we chose this case, but this will be released on April 22nd. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah, coincidence, you're right. Absolutely. Yeah, oh, a pure goodness. coincidence, but maybe something, some sort of a higher power was working there. Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, no kidding. So basically, this sex offender registry is an investigative tool. Uh, that allows officers to know exactly where sex offenders are living in relation to a crime scene, you know, if they come across a crime and they're, you know, suspect somebody like that's involved, they can look up and see who's in the area and what the details are, you know, name, phone number, address, physical characteristics. Um, and so it also details that offenders that fall under the right categories have to check in every year for 10 years to police. Uh, along with every time they move. Uh, so basically, like, they are mandated that they have to keep the police informed and keep this database up to date. Uh, so it's basically helping manage child molesters and other sex offenders, which mm -hmm. I don't think is a bad thing. <laughs> um, but for... Contrary to public uh, opinion, though, or, like, TV knowledge, you can't access this as a civilian no it's police police only yeah um, yeah well and it also designated so most people it's you know every year for 10 years but if you are a repeat criminal or you're sentenced to more than 10 years uh in prison you have to check in for life mm -hmm. right so for they're making sure for the really serious offenders like yeah guess what you're this is this like is for life mm-hmm if Fredericks was still alive, he would have had to register on this. Uh, yeah. yeah. After his five years was up. Yep. So <laughs> I'm just sidebar. You know how funny it would be to try to teach that kind of technology to someone that wouldn't have used technology for most of their life. Yeah, like because at the point, like what he, that was not he 1943, so he 1988, he was 45 years old. Mm-hmm. Yeah, know, that'd be like teaching my grandma how to use a cell phone. Okay. Yeah, but to be fair, they didn't have to 
actually use the database, right? They just had to True. give police the info. They, the police yeah. would, or I guess the courts as well, right? Would uh, be able to update it. So Harris was really pleased with this uh, at the time and offered it to the federal government, like free of charge, being like, hey, we made something really great. Um, you're free to use it. Um, so the federal government at the time, so that was um, Prime Minister Kretchen, uh turned it down. <laughs> Uh, which how much do you wonder sure if that's because Mike Harris was a conservative and <laughs> well, well yeah yeah and Christian was a liberal it's kind of like the yeah. Republicans and Democrats trying to cooperate it doesn't happen very often well, it's happening right now yeah like kind of fun yeah I'm ever in my opinion you know Justin Trudeau who's a liberal is cooperating with Doug Ford who's a conservative here in Ontario. Um, but it doesn't happen very often. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> exactly. You know, so it's kind of sad because, yeah, my best guess is there was some political bullshit going on and, you know, this falls through the cracks. Um, but Harris also offered the software to other premiers in the other provinces being like, okay, well, like, you guys also are free to use this if you want. It's a great kind tool. Of a big fuck you to Christian liberals. Oh, if you're not going to use it, I'm going right? to have your back and give it to the other premier. <laughs> exactly. Fine. You don't want to use it. I'll just have all the other premiers do it so that basically everyone's doing it anyways. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, uh, I mean, you can find online sort of exactly, um, you know, all the definitions that, you know, this would apply to and who has to uh, register on this list. Um, but sort of the main points is basically if you're convicted anywhere in Canada,